now what I'm doing now is I'm getting garnish ready for cup of Um I have bacon hard ons and I have mushroom that we're going to add in at the end of the dish. Now as you can see here what I have, this is ordinary black bacon that has been cut into lard ons here. I've just added a little bit of butter to give it the, I've browned off the, the butter just to give it a little bit of a flavour and also to help it kick off in relation to the cooking. Now the last thing that you want to do here is to overload the pan. So we're going to cook these off first of all. When they are cooked off, you can take them out, you set them aside, and as I said, these are going to be needed for the actual garnish in the cup of bath. So when I have these um, sauteed off and at the stage that I want them at, I will bring them back. Hi, chef. Okay, now we're moving on to the second batch of bacon. Remember, chefs, as well, that you um, don't be seized, don't season this when you put it in the pan. Remember that the, the actual bacon itself is plenty, plenty salty, all right? So you don't need to add seasoning to this when you're doing it. Chefs, I'm taking out the remainder of the bacon. You can see the stage that I'm having out here. I've more or less, I haven't 100% um, cooked it. It's blanched for a better word of it. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add in the, the next part of the garnish, which is the mushrooms, and then we'll begin actually pulling the cockleban together, okay? Now, the mushrooms are just about to go in. Again, same scenario, don't overload the pan. Yes, sir. Uh, what we want to do is um, basically we want a little bit of colour on these mushrooms, but we also want them uh, pretty much to cook as well. Don't forget, these are going to be added in at the end of the dish. Now you can see that they're picking up all the sediment from the bottom of the pan with the bacon. So exactly how we want it. Just leave that cooked away there and then come back to you when we're at the stage where we're about ready to actually pull the whole cup of band dish together. Okay chefs, now what we're looking for here is, you can see here, okay, the juice is starting to come out of the mushrooms, right? Now, they're ready. This is the stage we take these off, okay? Don't overcook them. As soon as you begin to see the juice coming out of the mushroom, that's it, off. Okay chefs, now we're ready to do the cup of band. Um, first thing now, We've sealed the chicken already, as you can see. We've put colour on the outside of it. Now, what I want to do now is basically get the chicken into the pan, get it going again, skin side down first. Now, I also want to add in, we want to have the flavour of the marinade all worked into the chicken, right? What I want to do now as well is I want to add in um, a shot of brandy. Now we can add in the brandy um, into, the, into the recipe. Um, it actually supplements and complements the flavors that are already here in the chicken itself. So um, remember that to if you're doing a large portion of this, getting your mise en place ready for the evening service, okay, it would be better to potentially have your, your sauce already made with your brandy in it. Um, and then just to give it a quick, a quick dash in relation to um, just giving resupplement it again, just re-enhancing it, and before you actually put it into the oven to finish off. Now, as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm dry frying. Now, I'm going to add in our shot of brandy now at the moment, in the next minute. Then I'm going to add in our demi glass. I'm going to put it into the oven. And uh, now, don't forget as well, our demi glass also has. A, an amount of the marinade already in it, included in there. Okay, so, um, okay, let's get with the brandy next. 
Okay, you man, stand back and watch there and be careful, okay? What we have here is the alcohol burning off. Now, the alcohol is gone. We still have residual in the pan here. I want to get this demi glass in the pan now. Our demi is going in now. Now, we want to cover this into our oven and cook it off for about 20 minutes. So, we're going to cover it now. We're just going to add our lid to this and then it's going into our oven and when we're ready to take it out we'll bring it back. Hey guys, now we've just taken this out of the oven, we've got to check that it's cooked and it is 75 degrees. Good core, a good probe like this is valuable to the kitchen. You can get anywhere like Bunsen and McLaughlin or any of the good stores. Right from the fire. Then we shall add some of the, the garnishing that we had done earlier, the lard ons of bacon, back into the sauce. The curl onions, nice and a little bit of parsley. A spoon of our mushrooms. Just to really make this a real rich sauce, we're just going to add some fresh butter, hard butter, and just uh, mount it in. Two minutes. As you see, the richness and the shine coming up through the butter, and now going to present it on the plate. Thank you, Chef. We take the breast out, put it down. The drumstick, as you said, the drumstick with the breast. The winglet. Just be careful how we work. And all the garnishing. And lovely, with all the rich sauce. Sauce becomes the essence of the whole dish. Presentation, just clean up your dish. Balance it so it's all there. A little bit more parsley. Voila. Excellent. Now, Chef, one question. Is this a classic coq au vin? The classic, the only other way you could change this would be if you've got a chicken with the livers in it, you'd puree them with some butter and you make a crouton and serve them on top. Excellent. Thank you, Chef. Chef O'Neill, thank you. Mm -hmm.